I feel hungry and now people. Yeah, them belly full but them hungry. Greetings and salutation to all nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Crocus Bag Farmer. You know I'm Rastafari, Soldier D, Crocus Bag Farmer. And I'm here trying to cook up a nice little meal here for myself and my beautiful daughter, Zakaya. So what I have in store here, I plan on doing some steam fish. You are on tea. So, you know, and cooking up some yam, some dumplings, you know, Jamaican style. So stick with me and you're going to be blessed by seeing how the Rasta man cook his food. Remember, I'm the Crocus Bag Farmer. Remember to hit the subscribe button. If this is your first time tuning in, leave your comment. Let me know if you have any specific meal that you would like me to cook for you, Jamaican style. Remember, what you eat determines your health. Well, my grandmother used to say, your health is your wealth. I say, eating is healthy. So you see, if you eat wrong, you're not going to be healthy. If you ever eat right, you're going to be healthy. Remember, hit that subscribe button. I'll be back with you in a moment. I'm going to start the pot up right now. Boom, bang, bang. First thing I and I want to do, get some water. I put the pot on. Because I and I, man, I'm going to put the banana and the, the, the yam in first, then the dumpling. Quick, quick cooking, you know? Quick cooking. The fish is what a lot of people run away from, from cooking fish. But fish is actually easier to cook than the actual yam. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to peel off a piece of this yam. This is yellow yam, a beautiful source of starch. Great for, you know, people who like to do hard work, carbohydrates and stuff like that is entailed beautifully intact this is the famous jamaican yellow yam so i'm going to slice it up and drop in the pot and then put two dumplings with it and then steam down some fish with some vegetable and some coconut milk so remember to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned all right leave your comment i'm rasta for rice soldier no i'm the crocus bag farmer yeah straight out of saint elizabeth jamaica all right bless okay families and friends welcome back to the crocus bag farmer channel i'm rastafari soldier cooking in the kitchen cooking up some yellow yam just want to show you how i take care of my yellow yam i just peel the skin off slightly and then slice it up and trust me i'm gonna eat all this yellow yam because i'm not gonna cook tomorrow and my little daughter is here with me so as you see i just slightly peel the yellow yam off and then i just slice it up i try not to cut it up first because it's to me it's more difficult to cut up small pieces when you start a pot the first thing you want to do is you want to put a, a, about a tablespoon of salt in it because it's necessary to give the food some flavor a lot of people gonna say rastaman on yam salt that's a lie because the food automatically have its natural salt in it ladies and gentlemen it is a health it help you retain water and it's a have minerals in it also just make sure you're using sea salt all right so once i get this like this Second thing that I do, I usually just wash it off at the pipe, but as you see, I cure everything off. I'm going to slice it, bust it, and everything is going to be right. See, I just do like this, come straight down the middle with it, wrap the knife through, right? And I'm going to do some speed cooking for you, and then I'm going to come across. These are my favorite cuts with yam. See how I cut them? Yeah. Just like that. That, that cut that I gave it right there, it helped them not to mash out too quick in the pot. So I'm going to drop it in. At least well, that's what my grandmother showed me, you know. Big up yourself, Miss Amy Powell. Yeah, R.I.P. You teach the crocus bug farmer how to cook, how to feed the family. Yeah. There it is. One very important thing, ladies and gentlemen. To be able to have a family, be able to feed them. Yes, yes. And like I said, before I start cooking, I usually just put a tablespoon of salt in the pot. Because my dog is here to enjoy it. Don't make no sense of doing fully idle when I know certain things are vital. Now, I also want to drop a piece of pumpkin in it and drop, a, drop some dumpling in it. So let the pot go ahead and bubble up. I'm going to take care of the fish, prepare it, show you the techniques that I use. 
So remember to hit that subscribe button. Stick with me, all right? I'm after far right soldier. The Crocus Bug Farmer. Yes, the belly full, but them hungry. A hungry man is an angry man. So remember, take care of the family. Eating is your health. Your health is your wealth. Eat your food as your medicine, ladies and gentlemen, or you'll have to eat medicine as food. Remember to stick with me. Hit that subscribe button. It's the Crocus Bug Farmer. I'm stirring up some dumpling, yam, pumpkin with some steamed down snapper with some mixed vegetable in coconut milk. Jamaican style. Rasta in the kitchen. You know it's finger licking. Yeah, all right, my family and friends. Right now, as you see, just came in from my local store and I got me a couple of nice snappers. But tell the guys they want the small one, them because to me, the small one have the less iodine in it. You understand? Yeah, so. They spend less in, in the water, in the mercury, less mercury I should say, not iodine. So what I usually do, although they take care of the fishes at the market very well, I usually like to come now, check them, and look into the gill. Make sure the gill was cleaned out, rewash them, and then, and I did a great job. Yes, did a great job. Right? Now... The main thing you want to do is kind of get some of the bacterium off the fish. And the main way that I do that, I usually use a knife, cut a line, and rub the fish itself. See like this white part right here? I try to get this out with the knife because this is the what they call the fish guts. And that's the part that reeks. You know, have that smell in it. So I try to pull it out. In the meantime, in between time, I try to just squeeze the lime in it. Actually, wash the fish down with the with the lime. See what I'm saying? Wash out the lime. Now you try to clean out the guts as possible. And that's how I do it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh oh. Just took myself with a fish bone and that's not a nice thing to occur. Mm. I just squeeze and wash. Squeeze and wash. Right? Squeeze and wash. That's it. Squeeze and wash. Here we go again. Any of the middle right here that you could take out that's called the fish that's the stomach right here so any you can get out whatever they let me but you're not not gonna get all the way out you just squeeze and wash squeeze and wash and that's how i clean up my fishes ladies and gentlemen I usually get them from the store, like that, and I just squeeze them out, squeeze them out, right? And that's basically it. That's how we do it here in the kitchen. I'm going to drop some seasoning on it now. Thank you for sticking with me. Yes, as you see, we are back. And thank you. This here now is my compost. This is These are the skin from the jam. I'm going to save that in my little plastic bag right here. And I will throw it in my gar your garden and it will actually become organic manure, organic fertilizer, okay? Now that we have cleaned up our fish, I'm gonna rinse this a little bit for you. Okay, we're going to drop a little seasoning on it. Seasoning that I like to use is just basic Pimento, grind pimento, pepper, and a little bit of salt. And that's really all we're putting on the fish, ladies and gentlemen. I like to slice the fish to the side a little bit. 
right here you know on the side so we can get a little seasoning into the fish itself if you notice you know I just like to slice it to the side like that so I could get a little okay ladies and gentlemen now what I have here is some mixed vegetables and you can either just you know buy from Whole Food or you know your regular grocers and what I'm going to do I'm going to take my fish season here and I'm using Old Harbor fish seasoning okay I'm sorry Blue Mountain from Old Harbor yes Blue Mountain fish seasoning and this is the fish seasoning that I like to just sprinkle in the opening and in the stomachs of the fish it's a little tad That's really about how I do it. Right down in the stomach. And then I'll go back now and I'll rub it rub it in. I'll just rub it in. Mmm. Smell that pimento seasoning. Smell great. Smells great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the pot over here starts agitating like it's bubbling. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cook up some dumpling. Okay, thank you ladies and gentlemen. Now the pot behind me is bubbling. So at the same time now, what I wanna do, I wanna get my flour prepared and my pumpkin prepared. Now, one of the secrets that I like to do, like I said, is to take the onions, the green peppers, the vegetables and you know season it up so bear with me a moment yes so once I season up the fish I usually like to just you know drop some onions some other vegetables in the middle you know some green peppers okra is a Jamaican is a favorite thing of Jamaica to use in the middle but right now I'm using onions green peppers um, I'm using some Carrots, because my daughter says she loves carrots, and I asked her. Well, you could almost use any vegetable. We like to use green vegetables like kalalu and stuff like that to stuff the stomach. And that is just our favorite way to do it. So remember, you know, you tune into the Crocus Bank Farmer here. You know, Rasta in the kitchen, so you know when I'm finished, it's going to be finger licking. Yeah, and if you are starved, and you don't know how to cook it's your fault so I'm gonna finish up what I'm doing right now whip it up and let you get the taste of what's going on with chewing fish with some vegetable stuffed in the middle with some coconut milk yes and some yellow yam piece of pumpkin with some dumpling more life more joy and more living welcome back ladies and gentlemen thanks for sticking with the Rasta man you know what I said mean? all right this is the pumpkin the Rasta man like to call it Yonkin. I like to deal with it like this. I just take the stump, the, the middle out, the seeds, and that's it. I don't peel it. I just wash it off and drop it in the pot. Because I believe that peeling things, you know, you get rid of the nutrients because the skin have more of the vitamins. Plus, it don't mash out the food as easy and quick. Yeah. So remember, when you're dealing with your pumpkin, you just cut out the middle, the guts. And right now these seeds right here, I'm going to go plant them right away, green like that. Because when you plant the seeds green, you actually get different, different color pumpkin. Yeah, see there. Crocus bag, I'm going to tell you that, see? It's a little lesson. So, I'm just going to slice up the pumpkin after I wash it. And drop it right in the pot, just like this. Watch it.
I just four piece me I put it in. Flash it, star. Watch it. What you mean? <laughs> Do something. When you cut in the pumpkin, people, if you can't cut straight through it, rock the knife. Rock the knife. Easy does it. Easy does it. Remember that one. See it there? Now, the next thing I'm dropping in is my flour, you know. And from the dumpling I go in at it, patch you know, set it almost ready for what? Eat up. So just stick with me. See there, see there, see there. Yeah, you stick with me. Thank you very much. Remember to leave your comment if you want to see me stir up something. This right here is regular, regular all-purpose flour. And I'm going to blend up what we call dumpling. You can't cook no... F Listen, ladies. Don't cook no pot. You know, Jamaican man, I know how no dumpling in it. I know give no one dumpling. All right, back to it. All right, the way you deal with dumpling, basically, you're going to just stir it around, throw a little water in it. I wanted to show you how to do it without putting your finger in it. But right now, I already done went bad and put the finger in it. So let me show you how to stir it up real quick and how to clean up your hand actually. Because we don't see that now for the girl that might talk about it. The way they don't want to put their hand in it. So as you see, I have my fingers like this and I'm stirring at the same time. Yeah, the pot is actually turning with me, but that's not part of the game. But you just have your hand like this and just stir slightly and drop a little water in it. And the flour is going to clog nice. Just a little bit of water. Some people just throw the water. Like my grandmother, she know exactly how much water to throw in it. So she just gets water in the cup and just throw it in it and mix it, mix it. You say, oh, the flour is spoiled. When it's spoiled, it's all putty putty. Yeah, you don't like that. So you just keep agitating around like that. And when you see it's clogging together, you can just do this. And the flour just come together. And then you know you need to add a little bit more water. And you just keep agitating it. Turn it around like that. Listen man, if you can if you can't cook some food, you don't have to tie no girl. Listen, listen, it's when me cook food and girls come out, they don't leave until a couple of years later. <laughs> Ask me be one of them. Yes, I cook up some food, man, yeah. Like Mata Diamond said, when she cook red pea soup, I tie she tie man. Um, Alright, listen, when me cook up my yard and yell come near me, <laughs> she not leave. We have to kick her out. So as you see, the flour gelling up. Gelling up. And ladies know disrespect. You know, me have my daughter in the next room. And as she met me a cook, so I said, you know, let me go ahead and record it. When I'm eating, I'm gonna let you see her. There's a couple of no sky already anyway, so you know. That's the way it is. And as you see, the flour is clogging up together. Nice. Nice. Where you could actually, you see? See? You could do it. Play with it like that. And then I like to, my grandmother used to test me. As you see, I'll be asking her, calling her name for years, Amy Powell. I'll just use the flour itself and wipe back off the pot. I say, you know, if you need the flour, good. That's what she said. You know, I'll just do like this. And <laughs> you actually can wash off the pot back off the flour. You understand? Yeah. Now, ladies, I'm going to give you a real quick secret. If you're making fried dumpling, well, after you knead up the flour, put it down on the counter for a few minutes, about 15 minutes, then you fry the dumpling. And then you get some fluffy, fluffy dumpling. That's the secret. Now, see the fun part, yeah. Right? My favorite thing is making the dumpling. This is like playing. Like a little kid having putty. Just roll it. Big dump. Mad. And listen. One thing I like are some big, dirty cartwheel dumpling wet. When you need one, you say, oh, my belly is small. You feel like a little boy. Come on, you eat a cheese dumpling. So ladies, don't use one pound of flour and make two dumplings. I eat that thing there. <laughs> All right. And as you see, as you finish the flour dumpling, you drop it in the pot. But actually, I'm going to let the pot boil up a little more because I'm going to see the pot bubble up but because as you drop the dumpling and the water boil over the dumpling in a five minute dumpling then the pot done so I don't know what to when I use the dumpling and drop in I wash me and wash my hand because food soon finished so remember hit the subscribe button leave your comment when you hear me say drop me and drop in the dumpling just get your knife and fork and wash off your hand because you're going to see you're going to taste it through the camera Bless up yourself, remember again, it's the Crocker Spot Farmer. Me in the kitchen, so when me a cook, I go be finger licking. Blessings. See it there? 
I roll it, I roll up the dump to them and drop them in. So, Bridget, like me saying, you know, make sure you cook for the youths, them, you know. And a woman love a man who can cook. So, and I really, the woman them I deal with right now, for sure them how to deal with some, some food. Because where I'm from, Cornwall District, Cornwall P.O. St. Elizabeth, Jamaica, West Indies. Hey, man, if you can cook, a matter of fact, if you go to a Jamaican restaurant, and you don't see a man there as the chef, something wrong, brother. You don't see, because chefing is chefing. Granny can cook, but you finally admit a who teach her to cook. A grandpa. So I just sit. Man, I roll the flour at them like a little run, run pie. You know? Almost like a little Reese's Pieces cup for the people that are foreign. But one thing me hate is an ugly dumpling. I mean, I'm not telling you no lie. So this is the technique that I use. Ladies and men, we're tuning in. So remember, you know, hit the subscribe button. I'll show you. I take off about this amount. Right? And then I just... Right in the center of my hand. And then with my thumb, I just push down the middle, separate it. My grandmother had put it on so and make it all nice and neat. And she said so, hm, hm, hm. Yeah, 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 but hey, that's advanced. I just do like this, spread it out to a decent size. Then I just drop it in. Remember, when I drop in the dumpling, that means the pot almost ready for Okay. But I almost cook. So this gas rain on my belly, I'll get shook. Watch when me eat it and burp. Burp. Simple ladies and gentlemen, we are dropping it. Yes. I saw me Thai woman here. Yeah. So youth, if you want to learn how to Thai woman. Then look at don't Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. when you're Thai woman, she have a loose rope. <laughs> Alright, not knowing of that. So see there. That one after my daughter, that one is cute. Yeah. And if you want the dumpling for tight, just go and knead it and put it down for a minute. Put it all hard when I say tight. So remember it's a crocus bag farmer. You tuned in, Rasta in the kitchen. You know it's gonna be finger licking. Remember to hit that subscribe button, leave your comment. And when you forward, I'm gonna start the fish. Cause that's already done. I'm going to start steaming down the fish and show you my little secret. Stick with me. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back on spot. And I'm going to start these red snapper nano maga sprat. So, when me tell you, say, me have a secret for you. Here's my secret. Yes, a glass of coconut milk. Whenever I'm steaming fish, I try to put in a base coconut milk or I use pumpkin or squash to give myself a base because the base when you actually can coat, coat the plate with your gravy that's when you know you're cooking five ten and all hundred class matter of fact it's a rasta class kind of class no higher than rasta class so when you're cooking your fish make sure you have a can of coconut milk if you want to go to the store if you don't want to go to the hospital bus and get the coconut and blending it and juicing it, you can use one can of coconut milk and pour it in before the pot gets hot, ladies and gentlemen. Because you're not going to like it if the pot gets hot and you throw the coconut milk in because it's going to steam up a lot and probably burn off. So before I miss what I want you to know, if you have all spice, that's one of the best thing to start out in your pot I'll add some cayenne pepper right here to help season the pot because there's no way you could cook fish without a little bit of spice in it a little bit of pepper don't let anyone fool you these cayenne pepper we call them in Jamaica bird pepper they give you a nice spicy flavor but it, the burn don't stick with you so I'm gonna break up three little cayenne pepper in the bottom right here to give me that flavor in this Pimento with the pimento mixed in in the belly of the fish. Now I'm gonna slightly lay the fish in The coconut milk so Like I said, you know, the belly full and I'm hungry Yeah, and a hungry man is a hungry man. 
Anyone that know me when I'm hungry, I cross. I mean, I have no resistance. My resistance have gotten weaker when I'm hungry. So what I do, ladies and gentlemen, today I went and pick up my little beautiful daughter. And whenever she's around, it just forced me to eat. So this is how I deal with the fish them. I just drop them in the coconut milk like that. Have them smothered. That's what they would do. Smothered in the coconut milk. Mad. Look there. Turn them, I turn them opposite. Try to make them fit better in the pot, you know. Put the swim around them. Bigger than I thought. See it there. And see it there. Now how excellent that seems to be to be eating from my hand in one harmony. Yeah, Rastafari soldier. Talk us back for my show you say. That's how I do it. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to close it down. Allow it to steam down in that coconut milk. Yeah, slowly. And simply surely. Then tip off a cup of water in it, you know. To kind of bring up your water levels. Actually, let me bring this one over some. To this side here, so you gotta get it submerged some more. But I eat that, people, you see? That is it right there. Looking like a Rasta chef. Rasta chef, red, green, and gold, the best. Yeah. And I think so we miss out on the red, green, and gold over here, so. What the fuck? Yo, they dumping them rice again. Now, as you see, once you finish, putting in the fish in the coconut milk you want to close it back have a tight seal so they could steam down properly you see what i'm saying yeah and it's going to be delicious and like i said the dumpling them rise again the dumpling rise up to the top and once you see the dumpling floating up on the top just like that you know so the food is ready so i just went ahead and turn off the stove and my practice is to remove the pot from the burner that is um so in case I haven't turned off the stove, and especially if you have this electrical stove, the fire does not go off right away. So ladies and gentlemen, take my advice. When you turn off the stove, move the pot from that burner. Because there's many times that me don't cook and me cook right, and she me left the pot on the same burner, and the burner not cool. It burn up the food. I make it look like I can cook. And I want thing I can do is cook. Yeah, so remember I'm the crocus bag farmer. Yes, it's finger licking time because I'm in the kitchen. Yeah, so I'm cooking some yellow yams, some pumpkin with some white dumpling and some red snapper steamed down in some coconut milk with some mixed vegetable in a middle. My belly a giggle. You wait till me eat this. So stick with me, leave a comment and I'm going to share it out next time I bust the pot. Remember that. See the people, after me just finish cook my pot, before me forget people and women want to remember this. For the youth them and for the man them, right before you serve up the meal, look upon this. I'm sure you don't think about safety still, you know. No, but the way you see me do, because how I do it. Just understand, see, as some pot water, I just throw out a pot. You are going And this is one of the things that's the most nourishing thing in the pot. So, like man like me, when I munch too often, I mean, I munch from morning, 
we will break it fast. This one called pot water. Or in America, they like to call it broth. I guess that sounds better. But a pot water, I mean, I So women and daddy, men, children, one of the best things you can have out the pot, right before you eat, Just make sure you sip it hot. Now, both of you say, I don't blame me. Pot water. Crocus bag farm. I'm my favorite thing when my granny used to give me. Especially the my bottom. With the whole heap of mash mash in it. Me rotted. Me, I want to show pot. Pot water. In America, they call it broth. It burp off the gas off of your chest and make you full joy your meal the best. So it's Rastafari, so to the Crocusburg farmer, saying, be blessed. People, I call call my daughter because I'm ready to eat some food, you know, because I drink two cups of hot water and I feel like I don't drink a third one and I don't want to ruin my appetite. Yeah, so I'm going to share out some food and make you see. My granny and I'm proud of me. You all like tea? Yeah, my granny and I'm proud of me. My daughter says she's ready for lunch. So I'm going to give her a little even. You can call it dinner, but I man call it a brunch. Give her a dumpling, piece of yam, and piece of pumpkin. Because I don't want to broke her too bad. When I jump here, I say, My God, you're okay with the little picnic belly. See that? She's 10 years old. And this is real food, people. Look here. Looking at my face, a real food this, all right? See there, a beautiful, beautiful piece of Jamaican yellow yam. Me can't tell it dry. One white dumpling and a simple piece of pumpkin. Yes, beautiful, organic, and delicious. So I saw my daughter eat a foreign shiban, but you see how she eat <laughs> white dumpling. I wish I did whole wheat and some yam and some pumpkin. I'm going to drop a little snap up on it and make you see it. And then make sure you eat. Hungry get defeat right now, people. Because, like me tell you, a hungry man, really hungry. Alright, I'm going to let you finally see the final. See the see the see the people. That's the final. Right? And I'm gonna slide this one on the plate for her. Cause she deserves her. Yeah. Now it's just I don't have a spatula. This is the chick, people. Getting up the fish hole is the difficult part. Actually, now give her. The top one. Then, I actually accomplished There it is. Immaculate. <laughs> Immaculate. And of course, we have two spinners to be the winners. And that's it right here, ladies and gentlemen. Red, green and gold and with ball. Crocusbug farmer teaching you how to steam down some red snapper fish. You have and tea. Look at that beautiful, beautiful dish. Marvelous. Zakaya, see it there? Let me introduce my daughter. That's the one I made it for. Yeah, man. Zakaya Renton right there. She's going to eat up that. Delicious meal. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Yeah, a beautiful meal for my daughter, Zakaya Renton. Yeah, remember I'm a crocus back farmer right here. See the meal here? She gonna eat it up. Sky, actually, hold on. Before you ever dig into it, taste it. Let me taste it. Let me taste it, meal yet. I'm going. You know, you want to fish it? 
Men know you don't want to. <laughs> See, American kids don't eat fish, yet, ladies and gentlemen. So, me and they have a fish yet. Because in Jamaica, you know what that means? Me and make a brata. I make a man. <laughs> All right, remember this is the guy here? Yeah? Eating up the fish. Same fish. More life. More jar. Remember, eat what you know. Let your medicine be your food. Or your food be your medicine. Other than that, you're going to have to eat medication for your food later on. To make your food be your medication. I'm the Crocosburg farmer. Just wanted to show you how we chef up some nice, nice steamed fish, yam, dumpling, and pumpkin. Remember to subscribe, like, and share. Leave your comment. Bless, bless, bless. For real, my family. Yeah, for real, for real, for real. My granny, I'm proud of me. Mommy, me know you're proud of me. And daddy, you know I say you're proud of me. Yeah, me know you're proud of me because you just followed the other day and come check me out. They didn't call me yesterday. But see, there's a crocus bag farmer. A delicious, a delicious display of this food from Jamaica. A ital countryman cooking this. You can tea. Steam fish. Yeah, me have two fish heads for the plate because I take my daughter one because she knows what I But I have two dumpling pizza. Yum, yellow yum, straight out of Jamaica, pumpkin and two red snapper head with the body I want. <laughs> Yo! Double head snapper in a coconut milk. More life and more joy. What you think? Rockers Bank Farmer. Yeah, the food you got done before you blink. So remember, you know, it's finger licking. Because the rasta man is in the kitchen. More life, more joy, more happiness. Mmm! Why should I pay myself for that meal?